you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Wake up. Hello. Welcome to Relax the Podcast. I'm Colleen Ballinger. I can't I can't follow that and act. You are. I can't follow that magic voice. You are Eric. I'm not supposed to say it. You have to say Stockland. it. I get mad when I do it. I said it. Eric Stockland. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome so, home, lovey. Thank you so much. What's it, what is he doing down there? I'm just, I, there's so much uh, chicken, chicken pine shavings everywhere uh-huh. because we have new chicks. Right. But that's not in frame on the camera. No, so, no it just looks like I'm itching and right. scratching down and, below And something. audibly, yeah, just scratching. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm so on, I am. I'm not a brain that works today. But You're not a brain that works? No. My gosh. But we have a fun episode for you guys. I have some things I really want to talk about with you. Okay. Um, I also really have to sneeze right now. Oh my God. It's like burning my nostrils. Why don't you just sneeze? <gasps> no one's stopping you. No, because it's like going to be a minute. You know what I mean? When you can like feel it's like, it's coming. <laughs> so you just want us all to know? Yes. Do it. Just do it. Come on. I'm trying. It's just like, do it. it's stuck. That's the problem. Uh, well, uh, oh my god whoa that was such a long build up that say, was so annoying the build up it was worth it that oh, sneeze was it was worth anyway, the, uh, hi everyone hi um i'm just me i'm the problem is me <laughs> you said everyone do you, you have to me and said hi everyone i'm i my brain is not alive <laughs> i'm so i'm unbelievably not even a human today but guys i wanted to Talk about so many things. There's so many things we have to talk about. There's some crazy stuff that we have to talk about. Okay. But first I wanted to say from last week, the last episode I talked about in that, how like there were a lot of comments about how they don't like when we bicker my, my love is I, I, listened, I listened to it. Yeah. And, and I, and I uh, and so, thought about it a lot. Yeah, since. So Eric and I, um, I, so I mentioned on that, like, oh, there's a lot of comments like they don't like when we bicker, they don't like when I interrupt. That is something I'm working on. I'm very sorry. I know I do that a lot. I will continue to do that a lot, but not on purpose. I'm going to actively work on it. Um, but the bickering thing, I was like, well, actively work on that to not do that as much. And then all of the comments after I said that, we're like, don't stop. Well, don't stop bickering. Then you're going to be fake. Be yourself. Don't be fake. I'm not, I wasn't saying we're going to like be fake and not like, you know, not be ourselves. It's still going to be the podcast. It's still going to be the same. It always was. It's just like, we're not going to let it get too far with the bickering. I'm going to try to be better about that. That's all I was saying. I was just saying, I was just gonna, we were going to be better about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all I was saying. I I mean. I wasn't saying we're going to change and be fakesies pantsies. Yeah. I, don't, I, had, I hadn't seen that feedback necessarily, but I can see how that could, I don't know. Yeah. Well, whatever. You know, whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's what I just wanted to say because th- then a bunch of people were concerned that like now we're going to be fake. And I was like, oh, yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So this um, is what I really no. want to talk about. Okay. Go for it. Speaking of my brain not working. Okay. Just, this is what's important. Okay. I saw a TikTok. Sorry to start <laughs> off the episode like this, but I saw a TikTok that blew my freaking mind, like blew my mind. Okay. Okay. And this person was talking about like, um, you know, brains that think very literally and like, you know, specifically with like neurodivergent brains and like how they think very literally sometimes and whatever. Anyway, she was like a good way to know um, if you think literally or not. She was talking about the chicken uh, crossing the road joke. You know, why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? Mm-hmm. OK, so my question to you is, what is the what is the punchline? Like, why is that a funny joke? What? Because it's literal, because it's like you're it's expecting the person hearing the joke to think of something funny, but it's not. It's just, what do you mean? It, yes. They, to get to the other okay, side. Okay, exactly. That's what I always thought. But this person is saying that the actual joke is that the chicken, like, it wants to, like, die. What? Like, it's crossing the road to get hit, like, get, go to, to the other side. Itself? Yes. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I brought this up with like people on the crew because I saw it and I was like, there's no way. Because I always thought the joke was that it was a dumb that, joke. Wait, that everybody that thinks a, that? I don't know. Because I was like, wait, I always thought the joke was like what you just said. I was like, the joke was like, oh, the joke is that it's just a stupid, like, yeah, oh, why am I so hungry? Because I haven't eaten. Right, like, it's yeah, like not a, sure. it's not a joke. Literal. The joke is that it's not a joke. The joke is that it's like stupid. Uh-huh. Like, oh, why am I going to the kitchen? 
because I'm hungry. Like, it's like stupid, you know? Why is chicken cross road? That is a stupid joke, yeah. Because it's not a joke. Right. And so that's why I thought the chicken cross road joke was, and this person's like, no, it's because the chicken like literally wanted to get to the other side. Like the other side, like on the other side. Oh, what there's, what it's like a, there's a double meaning See, this there. This is what I'm saying. The other side I'm of- I'm so happy you agree with me. life and death? Crazy. Yes. To get to the I've other side. I've never thought that I, Not in a morsel of my second, second of my life. life. I thought it was just a white chicken cross the road. You're supposed to be like, oh, why would a chicken cross the road? Exactly. Because, uh, um, because there was two, uh, trying to think of something funny. No, just get to the other side. That's idiot. what I thought yeah. too. And maybe that's true, but this person was saying and did other not. people say like, yeah, because the yes. chicken wanted to die. So I went up no, to, I was, I was at the theater because literally, guys, I just got home from tour and this is Eric and my first time being alone together. Like no joke, like we've been with the kids and it's been chaos because, you know, that's how it is when you have three young kids. And like, um, I literally walked into this room and this is the first time we are speaking to each other alone or really even speaking to each other, like since I got home from this long trip. But on this trip, that's when I found this information out and I freaked out and I ran upstairs from my dressing room up to the theater. We were about to do soundtrack. I was like, we cannot do soundtrack. You need to like, know. I if need to know if people this. know this. So I, I asked Corey and Corey thought the same as us. He's uh -huh. like, yeah, it's a dumb joke. But Stu and Sean were like, yeah, he's cause he like wanted to unalive himself. Like it's a double meaning. Like it's like a, He's like, oh yeah, you wanted to get to the other side, but no, like you wanted to get to the other side. What? And then there was like, I was like, there's no way. And so then I asked the crew guys, I was like, guys, what did you think? And one guy said he thought the same as me, but the other three guys were like, yeah, it's because he's like, oh, I'm going to die. The crew guys? The crew guys. Just like strangers that like work in the yes, theaters? Yes. I was just like, I needed to know. You're like just doing a census on like. Yeah. I was like, what did you guys know about this? Like what is going on about this? So now I need to open the question up to you guys out there. Cause I don't think it has anything to do with being a neurodivergent brain or not. I think it's just like some people thought the joke meant this. And some people thought the joke meant that. I never thought it meant anything. I never thought too much about it. Well, I never anything. thought too much about it either, but like, that's wild that like my whole life I thought, I don't know what's true now. Now I'm like, what is the truth? Is the joke that like the chicken wanted to get to the other side, like not be alive anymore? <laughs> or is the joke that the, it's no, not a joke is the joke that it's just well, a stupid answer. I have a problem answer. with the basic premise because like, Chicken, I'm mean, now as a chicken person, as a chicken man, mm -hmm. I would say, like, what are we talking? Because are they free range? They're still kind of ranged. What chickens are crossing streets? So, someone who so, I, so I disagree I with know. the basic premise because I've actually never seen a chicken in the road. Yeah, I mean, the I, whole, as men, as much as I've been on the road in my life and on, you know, I have. You've seen it. You've. <laughs> I have a scream. I really have. <laughs> so scream. I really have. You've seen a chicken cross the street? I, Where? Uh, Hawaii. You're a liar. Hawaii. I promise you in Kauai, it is often frequent. Those are Hawaiian chickens. So they don't count? They're still no, chickens. I, just think just, I think in Hawaii, I feel, I don't know. There's places in the world where chickens are just, <laughs> just everywhere yeah, running around. Yeah, that's the point. It's like, this chickens do you have cross so what, roads. You were, stop, you were like pulled up to a stop sign and they were like, oh, hold on, chicken. Oh, there's just the like road. chickens around. Like there's lots of chickens all over the You're roads. A liar. The parking lot. I swear to God. I swear to you, this is not bickering. This is a fact. <laughs> no, it's bickering. How could this possibly be construed as bickering? Me not believing you that you've ever seen an actual chicken really cross have. the street. Anyone who's been to Kauai will agree with me. Come on now. Have you been to Kauai? No. Well, I don't, so uh, that's the only chickens. place. So if you're a touring comedian, it's, oh, I feel like that's the only state the joke would work then. Because to me. Clearly not love because it's worked for centuries. It's pretty dark. Around the whole world. I don't think it's ever worked. I don't think anyone has ever laughed at that joke. And if they did, they're, it must be pretty dark because if they left, laughed, that means they got it. And they were assuming that this chicken was committing. Now, my question is, how did this joke get so popular? So, because uh, it's not a good joke, regardless of which is the true like answer to it. What, one what, step what, further. Guess what? Hmm. Guess what? I don't know. Guess what? Chicken butt. Yes. That's a great joke. A great. What I'm saying is like the best jokes are about chickens. <laughs> what are so, why are chicken jokes so iconic? and just Because chickens are dumb. Just stand the test of time. They're just the best, but they're also just like chicken. What a weird animal. But my point. Are their brains actually flat? I don't know. I've never seen a chicken brain. I just heard that. <laughs> Can we Google what a chicken brain looks like? Oh my like God. A, well, first we need to look up this. Are they apparently notoriously like not? Smart chickens, yes. I don't know. I mean, I, th I actually think chickens are smart. I feel like I heard chickens are va actually very smart. Oh, hold on. Who came up? I'm gonna look this up. 
Okay, guys, I didn't look up chicken brain yet because I'm just looking up the joke part of it. And whoever made that TikTok was a liar because and also everyone who thought that it was about a chicken dying like is dark. I guess half of the people in the world do think that because on Wikipedia, it says um, is a common riddle joke with the answer being to get to the other side is commonly seen as an example of anti humor and that the curious setup of the joke leads the listener to expect a traditional punchline, but they're instead given a simple statement of fact. The joke has become iconic as an exemplary generic joke to which most people know the answer and has been repeated and changed anti-humor. numerous times yeah. over the course of history. So yeah, that exactly is how I interpreted it. Exactly. Me too. Wikipedia so, agrees. Yes. Okay. So then it says, um, it came about, let me tell you how it came about. According to music critic, I am actually, even though you are not, (laughs) I actually am. Uh, According to music critic, Gary, who can, who can, I'm not fascinated by that. The joke was spread through the United States by minstrel shows beginning in the 1840s as one of the first national jokes. It's the first joke ever. It's one of the first national jokes. Wow. That's wild. Anyway. Um, that is, um, that TikTok was a lie. And everyone who thinks that it's a a dark, a dark humor joke was, I guess, incorrect. But anyway, um, did you learn that in comedy college? What? Yeah. No, I learned on Wikipedia. Um, okay. Hold on. Now I've got to look up a chicken brain. I hate that I look up chicken brain and one of the first recommended searches for that. Cause you know how, when you start typing stuff on Google, it'll like give you suggestions of what it thinks. Don't tell me to say soup. It says chicken brain KFC. (laughs) 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 Why is that suggested? uh, You love fast food, but you do not eat KFC. You know what? (gasps) I don't because, because in America, KFC, no offense, girl, but like, it's kind of known to be like the worst of the worst. Yeah. But did you know that in other countries, it's like, like, um, where is it? I think it's Japan. I could be incorrect, but I feel like it's, I think it's Japan that they eat it on Christmas day. Like it's like tradition to eat KFC on Christmas day. And like whenever I've been to like Australia, they're like, oh my gosh, we should go to like KFC. Like, and it's good. I've been to KFC in Australia and it was good. Oh, like other places, like it's good. You're being serious. I mean, I swear to you. Like it's fine dining in other countries. Not fine I just dining, can't believe it's like that good, it's Japanese it's tradition disgusting. to eat KFC on Christmas. I don't know if Christmas. it's Japanese. I need to double check. Let me just double check. Oh my God. I have so many things I'm looking at. So many tabs open. There's lots open. of fact checking happening this Christmas, episode. Christmas, KFC. What about their brains? I, well, I, you asked me a question and I'm, okay, KFC became a Christian, Christmas tradition in Japan. I was correct. Oh my goodness. Look, I am full of fun facts. Okay. Actually, I'm not. I'm full of like things I heard once I can't and then I have to look up the I can't remember the last time I facts. got KFC. Okay. So, um, so the anyway. Last, sorry. I'm sorry to, inter- to talk over you, but the last I heard of KFC was like 10 years ago was that they were like using fried chicken as bread for sandwiches. And I was like, I'm done. Like I'm, I'm out of here. Like they were making sandwiches where pieces of fried chicken were the bread. And then I don't know what would even go inside it. More chicken. (laughs) What mashed potatoes? I think so. I don't know. Like a loaded baked potato and then fried chicken or something. It was, and it was called like a chicken, chicken, chicken. (laughs) Crazy. I feel like that was real in a dark time, uh, in human existence. All right. We're going to learn about chicken brains. Okay. Do they have smaller big brains? Well, looking at a, chi- a Chinese chicken, well, can't even make words work out my mouth. Looking at a chicken's tiny head, you would be right to assume that they have small brains. The brains are about the size of a couple of peanuts side by side. That's pretty small. That's pretty tiny, but they're small. Interestingly, yeah. their brains are actually small in comparison to the size of their bodies. Yes, they're small, um, but it doesn't say anything about it being flat, <laughs> which is the question I asked. <laughs> It's thought that their brains have become smaller as they've adapted to being more suited to living among humans. They're like, oh, in order to live with these idiots, we got to get dumber. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, Anyway, okay, there's literally no, okay, are chickens smart? Uh, If anyone has ever raised chickens, I'm sure they'll tell you they are smart. Well, (laughs) I, I, um... They're, I think <clears throat> I think they're smart. There's a lot more going on than I assumed going into yes, the whole thing. That is true. Like I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. It's not flat. I don't know where that came from. Why did you say it was flat? Because I heard that. Uh, I heard that in the TikTok. Oh, did you, sir? 
Well, I felt dirty even saying Why? that. I think that's How do you weird. say that? Every sentence you say, so you know what I heard on TikTok. I saw but this on TikTok. So weird to me, but I that's so weird to me, love. That's like dirty, about but it. that's like so weird to me because it's like I'm kidding. It's like when TV came out. If people be like, "Oh, I saw this thing on TV," and people are like, "Ugh, you saw it on TV." I know. It's like it's a cultural thing. Like everyone yeah, has TikTok. Well, I heard this on Twitter would be worse. I know, but it's and it's and it's what well, it's how we are gathering information these days. But the, yeah, something about it seems like um, unverified. Or inauthentic. I don't know. I was making a joke. I was being funny. I, know, anyway. I was bickering. We're bickering. Um, let's let's say thanks to our first sponsor and stop talking about chickens Fine. for a minute. All right, let's do it. Booty B O sounds funny. Having it? Not so funny. You know? No one wants their booty to be stank, right? I mean, I don't think so. Anyway, we're excited to tell you about Lumi in Is case there a you choice. Is there something we can do about it? Well, if if you don't want your crack to stank. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know there was an option. Um, Lumi can, might be able to help you out. The world's best whole body deodorant, clinically proven to control odor everywhere. Your pits, which is where you think it would, but also like, you know, privates and beyond. Okay. For a whopping 72 hours. Hello. That's a long time. I have a confession. What is it? They send us some in a box. Yes. Different well, products that's not a confession. That's a fact. Um, and I ran out of my usual deodorant. And I was having a funky day. Uh oh. And so I was like, oh, right. They sent us that. And I know some people put it on their cracks. Is that where you put it? But I'm going to put, I'm going to, I was like, I'm going to put this in my armpits <gasps> and love. It's so great. So lovely. I smelled so good for 72 hours. Look I smelled that. like, you want to know what I smell like? Not a butt crack. No, peony rose. Peony? Not Penny Rose, <laughs> Peony Rose. Oh, P e o n y is. I mean, it's a Gorge. very specific rose scent, and it's really good. Like I, I'm gonna use it forever. Amazing. As an OBGYN, Lumi's founder, Dr. Shannon Klingman, met thousands of women concerned with the odor below the belt. Through clinical testing, she discovered it wasn't the lady bits to blame, but bacteria on the skin. So she created Lumi, a pH optimized aluminum free deodorant that actually works. Eric says it does. Right? Thank goodness for her. I thought at the beginning of that sentence, I thought you were saying that you were an OBGYN. I wish. But anyway, it works everywhere with over 150,000 five-star reviews to prove it. And there's a special offer. New customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with code Colleen at LumiDeodorant.com. So Lumi, it smells amazing. Like Eric said, you can it works great. Go ahead. Smell. I have smelled. You actually do smell delicious these days. Thank you. Gotta say. It's delicious. Yeah. Like. Like peony rose. You smell amazing. Um, it they have works a tangerine for, one, so I like too, a coconut one. I've, I've tried the three that they sent yeah, us. We have I've tried them all. that we get to try. Um, and they're all great. And they, and, and they work. I'm it's not really exaggerating. Like, like it, it, it covers a, a lot of time. Like it really does work for a right. long time towards other ones I've tried. And I'm talking like your, I mean, I'm not going to say their names, but all the ones that you would can think of, like for me, I don't know. I mean, yeah. it's just a me thing, but like they don't work that long, but this like does. It sure does. I'm going to start trying it in other places. You should. It's the first of its kind. This whole body deodorant. Lumi is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body. Your pits, your under boobs, thigh folds, belly buttons, butt cracks, vulvas, your feet, anywhere. Pick a spot. It can go there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like I said, uh, it was created by an OBGYN, not me, an actual OBGYN who f saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. Um, it's pretty wonderful. Aluminum free, baking soda free and paraben free pH balance for safe use below the belt. Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping as a special offer for listeners. New customers get like I said, five dollars off a Lumi starter pack with code Colleen at LumiDeodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit LumiDeodorant.com and use code Colleen. Lovey. Yes. Who needs to relax for you this week? So, so am I to believe that your relax was the joke? No. Why did the chicken cross the road? No, it was or was just something that just, I was uh, desperate to talk to you about. Oh, just, yeah, just burst out of you. Bursting you to talk, like, it was the you first thing yeah. I wanted to talk to you about. You were today. so excited. Um, that's really great. Uh, I want to talk about someone. Okay. By the name of Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. We talked about Chuck E. Cheese a while ago, and I didn't didn't realize that his name was actually Chuck, middle name E, period, Cheese. Like the mouse? The rat, per se? <clears throat> the mouse rat, yeah. You were on tour. Mm-hmm. 
Um, you were on the, the Colleen Ballinger Miranda Sings World Tour. <laughs> World Tour. Of Just Ohio. Of and the Pittsburgh. Midwest and South. Um, and so I wanted to do something fun with our son, Flynn. Yes. So it, we had some father-son, uh, a little road trip, mm-hmm. if you will. And while we were on our way to our destination, and you know me to be spontaneous, would you say that? Would you call me spontaneous? I would call you extremely, well, spontaneous <laughs> and yes, yeah, you are very. Well, thank you so much for that compliment. <laughs> No, you are. But there's like another word, but I can't think of it because my brain's not working today. Uh What's that other word? Like impulse, like I'm impulsive, impulsive. Yeah. Yeah. I have no control of my impulses. Correct. And I've always, um, I've had this affection for Chuck E. Cheese because there was one in our town. Um, and it, and it both excited me and terrified me, Mm -hmm. but there's never been one around us in a 50 mile radius. And we're on this little road trip and I'm going past an exit and I see a Chuck E. Cheese. Like I see the logo. I, well, I kind of see the logo because I don't really recognize it, but I know that it's Chuck E. Cheese. And I immediately sw- like or carefully swerve across three lanes, lanes and get off the highway. And I said to, to Flynn, I'm taking you somewhere right now. It's going to blow your mind. Mm-hmm. You're going to, you're going to freak out. You're going to absolutely love this place. And I got so excited and nostalgic and I'm like, get off the highway and I'm turning in there and I get closer to the the building and I'm like, what is this key art for Chuck E. Cheese? Like the drawing is different. Mm -hmm. Like, why does this look like, uh, like a marketing team was like, we got to make this for more of the kids these days. Like, I'm like, why would they change that? It was, Mm -hmm. I was very confusing. Um, and then I, I'm like, but I'm so excited still. Cause I'm like the band, the band, oh my gosh, the band, like Flynn's going to lose his mind. We're going to eat pizza and watch it. I didn't even care about like the games. I know he like loves like video the anim- games. For those like, you like, don't know what he's talking about, the anim- sorry to cut you off, but the animatronic, do, do not? Like, I, like, there might be people listening who don't know. There's an animatronic, terrifying, some iconic, would say. iconic, yes. but like, um, band of rat, rat animals, it just creatures. There's different, cre- different animals. Yeah. Uh, that are, yeah. It's really creepy and terrifying. The Chuck E. Cheese band. Yes. Yeah. That's of animatronics that they, yeah. that do a show every hour when you're at Chuck E. Cheese. Mm-hmm. But it, it, I feel like this is so much of my childhood and just an iconic experience. And I was so excited to share it with him and we get in there and then we're going, we have to like go through a turnstile and they stamp our hands, both me and like Flynn's hands, like we're at a club. And I was like, oh, they're stamping our hands. And then we go into Chuck E. Cheese and I was immediately so deflated, so sad because there was no stage with an animatronic band. There was a projector screen playing essentially the kids bop like mm-hmm. music video YouTube channel. It was literally just kids bop music videos. And I'm like, what is going, what, it, what is this? This, it just seems so like, um, vacant and it, th- like, it didn't have any kind of, um, it was, it wasn't inspired. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was just like a square box. It's very like uh, everything was, I don't know, not clean, but like, it was just nothing Mm -hmm. without that stage and that animatronic band. It was just a big square with like lots of arcade games, I guess. And they had like a light up, you know, one of those kind of, but little, like the size of like an eight by 10 rug, like light up dance floors with all the kids running around trying to step on the thing. And then it moves away. Kids bought music videos and video games. That's it. I've, I just felt sick to my stomach about this because I had built it up so much mm-hmm. to him and he, he had fun. Was he excited when he got it? He was. But the other thing too, is like, uh, now there's not even coins to play the games. You get like a little card, like a little credit so card. Lame. And so it's like, you're not like putting coins and things. You're like swiping a card or tapping a card to play a video game. Like, which I'm sure somehow makes them like make more money or something. Right. Like, it's also probably cleaner than like a bunch of slimy kids. Sure, like Sure. But like, you know how there was that one game with like the gold coin. Not all kids would, are slimy, but like, you know what I'm saying? You put the gold coin coin in like the thing and mm-hmm. then it would and go it to the other the gold coins, coins and, and they'll drop yeah like classic like this is how we all became addicted to gambling you know what i mean like like i don't, I don't know there was so, something about that's it that's the best game. everyone you just keep putting coins and you spend so much oh, money to get it because, to all dumb what? because because what comes out of the machines when you play tickets the, the little 
And coins. Just, the coins yes, and the coins. The coins oh, yeah. But like when you, but you, your Chuck E. Cheese, you're winning tickets. Like they oh, yeah. come out and like the strip of tickets and oh, you rip off the tickets. Oh, yeah. Like folding up the tickets in like a roll. You're like, you always I see got someone who's tickets. clearly been there for hours who has yeah. like huge handfuls right. of like the you tickets. You know, they mean nothing. Now they just go on the card. And the tickets so will be on the lame. card. Like it's just taken. Same thing about Vegas, by the way. In Vegas, it all goes on like a paper receipt as opposed to like if you win. Like I remember being a kid and going to like, we never went to really Vegas. We went to Laughlin, Nevada, but they had arcade, uh, arcades. They had casinos. And my mom would like, like the bucket of change slot, or yeah, whatever. A bucket of yeah. nickels, a bucket of pennies, a bucket of quarters. And it was so fun. Yeah. And now it's like, you get a paper receipt. That's like, you won 67 cents. It's like so yeah. stupid. Um, it's not very exciting. So he still, he still had fun, but for like, we were there for probably like a half hour. And we like, we play, like, I put like you know, $30 on the card and we played wow. all the games he wanted to play. Um, and I'm just staring at this kid's bop projector screen, like, and like, there wasn't like, nobody was really eating p- the pizza cause the pizza was also kind of like iconic there mm-hmm. or whatever. And I was just like, all right, well, let's keep driving to our eventual destination. But I was so disappointed that I, I looked into it further and I saw that like, this is something that happened in like 2017 mm-hmm. and I didn't even realize it. So it's been like, it's been years that they, that the company decided to eliminate uh, all of the animatronic bands at all of their locations because um, I have the exact quote from, so so they were bought in 2014 by a hedge fund. Okay. By a, by a company, a hedge fund worth like $200 billion that wow. also owns like Barnes and Noble. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like use your imagination kind of a thing. So the new CEO, once they bought Chuck E. Cheese in 2014, said a child today has such high expectations for entertainment that the animatronics, even at their absolute best, can't live up to those expectations. Well, I say boo you, sir. What what should their expectations be? Like I don't know, nothing, Lovie. nothing, nothing real, no coins, no tickets, no actual band, just a screen with YouTube. Like I just I felt I just I felt lost, lost in the world for how to um share the things that I loved as a kid with my kid that like the world that he's been born into now that the people, I don't know that it's just, am I, what's what's your smile? Because you're making me think of a TikTok. (laughs) (laughs) But you'll like it. You'll like it. Yeah, no, I I often love your TikToks and you send me TikToks and I laugh at them. It's just an inside joke. I know, I know, I know. I'm bickering. I love your TikToks. I know, I know. Um, No, I'm I'm smiling because I agree with you. And the TikTok I'm about to tell you about was making me laugh so hard. I'll have to show it to you later. But um, this this guy, this like um, young, I'm sure, you know, shirtless, beanie wearing, long haired, like, Gen Z ish question mark kind of guy. This is on your for you page. No, it's not. We, which you would think it. You're. I know you're thinking that. No, it's a stitch. So someone who would definitely be on my for you page was stitching this okay. video. So this guy's like responding to a comment. Someone said something about drinking out of a uh, the hose. You know. Uh huh. And this guy, this As young guy. Yeah, yes. of course. This guy goes. He looks at the, the comment best. and he's just like. Have you never heard of a sink? Like that's why would anyone? He was baffled why someone would drink out of a hose because we weren't allowed inside. Oh my god, I love you so much. I'm so in love with you. Okay, literally that is because this woman stitches this Who? guy, this millennial woman. You know, oh, she's okay. just like so she stitches him. So he's like, why would you drink him from the sink? And she's like, oh my god, who's gonna tell this guy? Who's gonna tell him? Oh really? We weren't allowed in the house. <laughs> she's were? like, yeah. That's and it's so, so funny. funny that you said that. And she's like, we weren't allowed in the house. We had to stay outside. Side. And she get, starts listing all the things. It was like, like 7 a.m. and they were like, get outside. Get outside. Don't come back to the Don't dark. come in. Like the I re- I still can taste the hose water. I can taste hose water. But you know what I'm talking because, about? Like, you could, you, you go were, outside, you're at the beach, you're dirty. You stay outside. Right. You're playing outside and you're playing in the dirt. You're playing yeah. in the gra- you're on the slip inside, you got grass stuck to your feet. You're not coming in the house. Yeah. Like you're drinking from the hose. Right. Like come you're on. Like, yeah, you're at a friend's house on your BMX bike. They're not letting you in. No way. 
right. You have to drink, you drink out, out the hose. Yeah. If you're thirsty, you drink from the freaking <laughs> hose. But the way that this woman responded to this guy was so hilarious. Uh-huh. Like just being like, we weren't allowed in the house. What That's are you talking so about? Funny. But like, but then she went on to list like how we are like made of steel. She's like, they had to, do you understand? They had to make a reminder on the television every night at 10 PM to remind our parents that they had children. <laughs> it's 10 PM. Do you know where your kids oh, are? Funny, yeah. Like it was on TV every night, it's, like the yeah. commercial. Cause it's like, so we didn't have do, you, cell phones. do you know where your kid is? Do you know you have kids? Right. You check in on that. Oh, like, funny. And it's so true. I was thinking about like, when we are kids, I'm not comparing this to Chuck E. Cheese, but just like how different it is. Like I would just like walk to like a nearby Creek when I was like a young girl and just play with like my sister, like at the Creek <clears> or like go just like go for a walk and around the neighborhood or like go to a playground with a friend, like just like, but like little kids, like you'd ride around on your and bike. It turns out, I'm sorry, but it turns out in hindsight, right from a documentary, we watched a very famous serial killer, like, <laughs> Stalked this creek <gasps> okay. or something? Not that one. Not the one I went to, but like, but it, the no, creek it was next like, that it? was part of the like path he took. Well, there's a lot of creeks in cities. Um, but anyway, that's okay. not the creek I was at. But anyway, the point is that like, it was, I would never like have like, ever because just be like, yeah, just go play outside. I don't know where they are. Like, and just be like, not, not, and that's not shaming th- our parents in that generation. Of course just times not. are different I now. Did, well, yeah. I mean, cause you, cause you now have had more dangers that. now. Sure. But you also have that connection like available to you, like, you know, yeah. like to whereas like they didn't like, I'm sure if my parents could put like an Apple air tag, like in my back pocket now, like, you know, yeah. back then they would have, um, right. but they didn't have that and they had to, to work and we were, we had to be outside. I had a dog tag. Yeah. Like what? a bracelet. Oh, well, oh, okay. A bracelet dog tag that like, you know, like yeah. it was like essentially a dog tag that you'd wear around your neck, whatever, uh-huh. but it was on, on my wrist. I like think it, I had. It was metal. I think it just said nothing. It was like a metal chunk with like a chain, and it said like my name and address. That's and smart. Over. Yeah, that, that's smart. Yeah, I don't um, know. That's what my parents did. I, I, at least I kind of remember that. Maybe I don't know how long I had that, but yeah, it's a different, it's a different world. And so when you're trying to teach and relate to your child and figure out how to be a parent, um, and you get really excited about something. And then to them it's, and then you go to show it to them and it just has completely changed. And it's, and you, then you f- do research and you find out cause they're like, yeah, cause this is what your kid wants now to be entertained. They can't be in, entertained by like an, an animatronic rat band. They need a, a projector screen with kids bought music videos. And I, I just like, I, I say, you're wrong. I say, I think, I think Flynn would have been terrified by that band. I, there's no, more. No, would have loved there's it. There's more to this. Story. It was so I'll cool. finish the story and then we'll, we'll say thank you. But like, so instead of the band, what they have is, uh, this is how I found this out is because we're playing a game and then all of a sudden Flynn hides. He hides behind the game. And I'm like, why is he what? hiding? And he's going. <laughs> oh, he's Chuck just, he's pointing anywhere. And it's because they have a guy, instead of the band, they have a guy come out in essentially like a Disneyland character costume of Chuck E. Cheese, like every hour to like take selfies with people and whatever. Flynn was terrified mm-hmm. because, um, in his, because he thought, and I had to explain to him that it wasn't actually a giant rat person, that this was someone in a costume, which is really strange to me. And maybe yeah. reflect on like, have I not taught him enough about that costumes? <laughs> he thought yeah. it was real. He thought it was a real thing. Oh. And I had to explain to him that it was just a person in a costume. Um, and then they, they came over and waved and he was, he hid behind me, he buried oh. himself in me. Like he was so terrified. Yeah, I was pretty, pretty, but yeah, he didn't. I explained it to him and then he was fine. But I was just like, how did we miss that in our parenting? Like, how yeah, did we what? not explain like, like his mom costume. literally dresses up in a costume. I don't, for I don't understand. Yeah. I was, I was really like, wait, you think that's real? Like, but I didn't say it like that, no, but of I was, not. you know, sweet. And then we go to leave and I just go to walk out of the place and a woman runs up behind me and like tries to stop us. Um, I go to leave after like all the tickets on our card earned us a lollipop. Mm-hmm. Mind you, I spent thirty dollars on this card. We oh, played, all, oh we played every game in the place. We won, so, we won so many. He did really good at skee ball. Really, like he was hitting like the middle, like the fifty hundred. Wow. Like he was doing really good. Uh, so we got the lollipop because that's what it earned us. And we go to leave, and this woman runs up behind and, and stops. Wait, wait, I have to check your stamps. What? I was like, the club stamps from the beginning. What's happening here? And she goes, I have to check your stamps to make sure you know. You're not leaving with someone else's kid. So <gasps> apparently they have a dial on the stamp and they turn it for every person so that each uh, family or, or, or parent or guardian with each kid gets a matching invisible. You don't see it. It's an invisible stamp. So they check it with like a like a black light pen or, or whatever. And they do that to make sure that people aren't leaving. And so I was, But I was so surprised. I was like, what do you mean you have to check our stamps? I was like halfway out the door and she made me 
Oh made my us come God, back that's in. horrifying and I was like, that I, people do that. And, she, and then she didn't explain, but so, but I asked, I was like, why are you, I'm sorry, this is my first time in Chuck E. Cheese in a long time. Why are you doing this? And she said that. And I was like, oh, well, that's great. Thank you for checking. Yeah. And I appreciated it. Of course. Um, but wow, I can't <clears> believe that, that that has to happen. Like that that's, a, I don't know. It was just, it just made it more of like a worse kind of experience from like, like well, everything you were just saying about the creeks, et cetera. Yeah. And like, and, and everything that, uh, wow. <sighs> Holy smoke, holy. Yeah, those, yeah, they, they, that band, those, they all just, they, in 2017, they're like, we're redoing it all for like what we assume the audience wants and needs now. And they just packed up all those animatronic figures and shipped them off to their company's headquarters in Texas hmm. where they're, I don't know where they are. Terrifying buy, people there. Yeah. If you, if you I don't have want one, one of those, left. don't oh, say okay. this, don't say these things out loud. Okay. I don't want one of those terrifying animatronics. Because for me, in my childhood, we only went to Chuck E. Cheese if a couple we times. we went to a party at someone's house and they had Chuck E. Cheese in their house and they were like, yeah, I, I bought one on eBay. I would be like, you are my best friend. You're the coolest person well, I've ever met. I, I, did you say Matt? Matt. Oh, I thought you said like, you've named this person. <laughs> you're the in your coolest mind. You're Matt like, I've ever you're met. You're the coolest person ever, Matt. <laughs> like, you know a Matt who's done this or something. Or you just assume a guy who would do that would be named Matt. Probably. Yeah, I don't um, know. Well, I, I, all I know is that I've, I we went to Chuck E. Cheese a couple times. Like, I feel like I could count on one hand for sure how many times we went to Chuck E. Cheese growing up because it wasn't too close to us, but also it was really expensive. And so we never, we didn't go it's too a, often. It's a big day. Yeah. All the, all the tokens. It's like a big day. Yeah, and like, yeah. yeah. And, um, it's a know, birthday. It's a birthday kids, party thing. You know, it's, it's a hard thing. So anyway, my, um, we didn't go very often, but <clears> I do remember <throat> thinking that that animatronic, um, band was lame back then. I think they mostly just played happy birthday. They mostly just were not great. Like out, I, I, I didn't look into even that. Back like then they were like, songs. they're terrifying. You I know. feel like there was, uh, there was something there to mine. There's, there's a lot to mine there. Like mm-hmm. I feel like they could make a comeback. I don't know. Um, I don't know about that, but I'm rooting for that. Well, I'm sorry. It was such a horrible experience for you. I mean, I still had, fun. It, there's, it was just, it was more cerebral. I mm-hmm. had a, a great time with our son, but mm-hmm. it, but for me, like reflecting on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Wanting to share and relate was, it was a disappointing moment that that band wasn't there. Um, I'm so sorry about that. Lovey. Thanks for being so empathetic. Um, you're welcome. (laughs) Before we say thanks to our next sponsor, I want to bring up one other thing while it's just in my brain, because I'll forget by the time we finish the sponsor. But, um, you guys, if you want a nice little laugh for yourself today, this evening, by the way, I doubt the microphone picked it up, but Eric's foot just broke. <laughs> we expect, wow. Yeah. If we want to do what we did to you last episode and just hold the microphone to places in my body that now crack Love, and creak. That was crazy. His I broke ankle, that leg. he literally just shifted his body weight and his ankle snapped in two. Since I broke that ankle skateboarding when I was I've never heard of that a loud. junior in high school. That was very loud. Time. Yeah. That was well, that was very loud. Anyway, I doubt you guys heard it. Um, what I wanted to say is that if you guys wanted a little chuckle today, just search on your TikTok. Sorry, this episode's all about TikTok, I guess. I love but it. But search on your TikTok. Um, like can't remember how to skip or forgetting how to mm. skip. I somehow stumbled upon TikToks of people filming older men typically, um, not remembering how to skip. And it's made me You've laugh me a lot so of these. hard. Funny. I like almost cried. Um, so please, if you want a good laugh, since this is a podcast, if we can't show you, like if most people who listen, like you can't see it. So I'm just telling you, you won't regret it. Um, you sent me these and then you texted me like, it's making me think that you don't know how to skip. So I made him send me, I didn't make you. I was like, I just so feel I just like sent, you, no, so I just sent you back me, videos of me skipping. But it's the funniest video ever because you had Flynn film you yeah. skipping. But right when you started skipping, I see like one skip. Moose and then went insane. Moose started running around. And so Flynn started filming. Moose. He's like, whoa, calm down, guy. <laughs> hey, Moose, boy, you're freaking out. So then Flynn's filming like his feet and Moose. And then at the very end of the chaoticness of Moose running around getting excited because you were skipping. So Moose is like, oh, we're playing. This right, is yeah. Eric is skipping something crazy is about to happen is what Moose is thinking. So Moose is going bananas. And then Flynn at the end of the video, you go, did you get me skipping? He's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like he's the funniest the, he's video the best, ever. Uh, photographer, videographer. He actually kind of is, but yeah, like really that great. moment was very funny. Anyway, let's say thanks to our next sponsor. <laughs> 
Spring is here. It's springing, guys, and Stitch Fix has a range of wear now styles in spring forward colors, trends, and patterns to help refresh your wardrobe. With Stitch Fix, you can get a personal stylist who will curate the perfect pieces for your unique style and fit. Get started now and bring some new life to your wardrobe this season. You guys, we've talked, 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 whoa, talked. Wow, that's the word I was looking for. We have talked a lot go. <laughs> about Stitch Fix on this podcast. We love Stitch Fix. It's awesome. It really is like having your own personal stylist just send you clothes. You don't have to worry about sh- shopping, finding stuff that's cute no. on you. You don't have to worry about anything. Like you just, you just get to worry about just, looking cute. You just go on their just, app. You thumbs up, thumbs down styles you might like, and then they curate it, send it in a box. And I'm telling you, when I get that box, I feel like I'm... It's Christmas morning, like, man. It? No, not even. It's the Met Gala. Oh, dang. I'm like, I'm like what's what am I wearing? to the Met Gala today. Oh my. My, I mean, I don't leave the house that often, but like, you know, for around the house. It's pretty great. Yeah. Stitch Fix is the best way to discover new styles and brands just for you. Think of Stitch Fix as your style partner. Your stylist will learn about your taste and collaborate with you on looks that you'll love. All you got to do is answer a few questions about where you typically like to shop and what you like to wear and your price range, etc. And with your choices in mind, a wide range of sizes available from extra small to 3XL, they'll find your perfect fit. They got you covered with over 1,000 brands and styles. Try your pieces at home before you buy. Just keep what you love and send back the rest. Plus, Shipping, returns, and exchanges are always free. There's no subscription required. Simply order a refresh as needed or set it and forget it with regular seasonal fixes. You are in control. So right now, Stitch Fix is offering our listeners $20 off their first stitch at stitchfix.com slash relax. That's stitchfix.com slash relax for $20 off today. Stitchfix.com slash relax. relax. Um, Eric, you know, my relax was not... Uh, whatever we were talking about at the beginning of the episode, I don't even remember now. But Why did the I, chicken cross the road? Oh yeah, road? it was not. It was just, I wanted to bring that up. I do have someone who needs to relax <laughs> You're though. You're so passionate about it. I was. I was like, but like the whole time I'm like, what's, where's the relax going to come It wasn't in? a relax. That's I okay. do have the relax. We don't need to follow any format. It's, we have free will. Yeah, of course. Whatever we talk about, whatever we want. Um, it's our date night. I know, right? But I do have someone who needs to relax. Tell me. And it's a person. I feel like we never have people. A specific person? A very specific person. Okay, go for it. I feel like when you and I say someone who needs to relax, it's like you or me, or it's like toenail clippers. Like it's like something random, you know? Do they have specific? Oh, the bigger ones are for toenails. Got it. That's what they say, which, which that never made any sense to me because your toenails are tip, like there's the one big one, but the rest of them are so small. I don't know. I mean, Why have you, you, have you ever tried to, one? to, um, to clip your big toe with the, just a fingernail clipper? Cause it's, <laughs> it's madness for me, for me, it's, it's like, it's like, how do I even get, I, I have get it many times there. and it's been fine. Well, you have dainty little, but I wouldn't say that. I, I think feet are like my, well, I think, anyway, we're not talking about feet right now. That's what <laughs> I'm freaking sure. What is Wait, this episode called? You, you can? The feet episode. I can't, I literally, I really can't. I can't, I, I'm can't not a feet person. trim my big toenail with. You can't? Average every day. It's just, it can't. <laughs> 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 I went on like a probably 10 minute rant about toes um, during this Miranda video I did last week. And everyone's like, oh. how did you do that? Like, I, I can't, how did, did you, I, and I was like, I didn't even realize I talked about that long. And I was like, it was like, I was Miranda, but I was like kind of talking as me about, to be honest. Yeah. We shouldn't talk about, but anyway, um, toes. have you ever been, in a, <laughs> this is such a stupid question, <laughs> but you can't clip your toenails with a tiny fingernail toe clip, no, fingernail clipper, not at all. but have you ever been in a like really <laughs> <laughs> like desperate giggling, situation uh-huh. where you like cannot find nail clippers anywhere and you're like, I just really got to do this and you use scissors? No. I've done that. I feel like when I was very, like very much younger, there was like scissors that were curved. What? It was like a pair of like little scissors, you know, the little scissors, mm-hmm. but they like had a, a curvature mm. and, and they were for that in our house. They were for your toes. I don't, I don't know, but they were just like, it was just like, I mean, maybe other people had this growing up, but in our, like we had like essentially one bathroom Yes, and in that one bathroom was a cup. And then that cup was just like, just just like a rusty pair of curved scissors, like whatever, you know, just Hmm. random (laughs) cutting stuff. Stuff, kind of cutting. like toothbrushes in there. Oh, I, don't know. Get out I, don't know. I don't know. What was it like? People maybe drank out of the cup. Who knows? I don't know. 
Well, um, <laughs> what's your question? <laughs> I didn't have a question. I was going to tell you who I think needs to relax. Okay. My question was, have you ever cut your toenails with like a scissors? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess when I was a kid, yeah. Anyway. Um, so who needs to relax is not any of the things <laughs> we we're just talking about. Okay. And I won't talk about this long. Cause I don't know if you had other topics or things you want to discuss today. Not really. No, just toenails and Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> just Chuck E. Cheese. Animatronics. Yeah. Okay. There was a man. And I'm not going to name the city a lot of times. Okay. You said a specific person. It is a specific person. I'm not going to say who it is because it would not end it's well not for this specific. person. Um, but it is a specific person I'm going to talk about. Okay. So a lot of times when I'm on tour, mm. I have interactions with people, whether it be at the venue or in the audience. And I like, because I share so much of my life on the internet, I'm always like, Oh, I wish I could talk about this, but I don't want anyone to find out who I'm talking about. Cause I would ne- I would hate for like this person to get like, you know, harassed in some way, like, or hated, like, I don't know. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, cause if it's some, I'm talking about someone being not good, like someone being nasty or mean or. Yeah. But you're not nasty or, or mean. So of course you wouldn't want to actually. Of course yeah. I don't want to like, anyway. So I, I always am like, okay, I'll just talk about this someday later. Like when something happens at a show, because I wouldn't want someone to figure out like, oh, well she was just in Chicago. So it must've been the Chicago show. Let's find footage of the Chicago show and see which audience member she was talking about or, you know, whatever. Like if someone's heckling me or, you know, whatever. Mm. So I have all these stories of bad things that have happened at venues, whether it be through an audience or crew member or security or whatever. And guys, I recently, and I'm not going to say which show, but I recently had an experience where the, uh, there was a crew member who was one of the rudest I've ever met in my life. To be Oof. honest, he picked up my props and threw them across the stage for literally no reason. What do you mean? Like, so like what props? Like there, I have um, like curtains on my stage and behind the little curtains that I, that we bring, not like the actual stage curtains. I have these little curtains that we bring with us okay. and behind those curtains is like coat hanger type racks. Right. And on those, we, we have like things hanging from them, costumes. We have like little shelving, little unit kind of things that I can put different props in little pockets and whatever. So that for quick changes, when I can just rush behind my little curtain, grab the costume I need or the wig or whatever and go out. So, um, my team was in the process of setting up these props on the hangers and a crew member came up and picked it up and threw it. That whole, the whole thing. Of hangers? It. Yeah. With all the props on it. And so overhand, underhand, I didn't see it. I didn't see it happen. I just heard it. about it from the other people because yeah. when I got to the venue, cause I got there like an hour after my team did. Um, diva. no, <laughs> I'm not a diva. <laughs> I mean, sure. Fine. I'm a diva. But like, usually when I get there, I'm like waiting for an hour or two yeah, before. Man. So I'm like, might as well be at my diva. hotel. Room. Anyway, get, yeah. whatever. I get there an hour <laughs> after them and the props were not like set up on the stage yet, and which usually they are. And then I, whenever I get there, I usually come and I start helping them like finish up, like setting up the stage and setting up everything, whatever. Yeah. So I get there and like the stage is not set up and I already know what happened. Cause I, I received a text message about the situation. I was like, what? And I got there. I was like, there's no way someone just like picked up props, like threw them. But that really did happen. And I got there and this person was storming about angrily it's just so weird up a because storm, so you're a furious. touring artist in their theater. You would think they would be, you know. Well, it's because like, so welcoming like, you, and yeah, some of sort of hospitality. Well, but not only that, you think like, oh, well, what was the reason? Like, why did someone make this person mad? Did, was it put somewhere it wasn't supposed to be? Like, what was the reason that he would feel the need to throw a big, hanger worth of like props. Like what's he going across through? the stage? Yeah. Like what, or like what happened in that moment? Like, was there an altercation, yeah. you know, but no, what happened was literally they're just starting to set up the stage in silence. Like no one was interacting. Like there's not a problem. Like they introduced themselves to the crew. Mike, they like everyone met each other started working. And he said, he just threw him off the stage. He's like, you can't set up your props on my stage. I'm still working. You need theater. Because some theaters it are was, union or non-union. It was, but we've worked with plenty of union theaters over the last 15 years. Of course. And there's never been an issue with that. And if there is some sort of an issue with the props and how they're handled on the stage, they speak to they you on a, hu- a human it. level of, yeah. of nicety. Like I've had a venue once where um, Rachel was setting up the props on the stage. This is a bajillion years ago because Rachel was working with me at then. But they came up to her and they said, you can't touch my props. They said to Rachel, you can't touch my props, oh, like the prop handler. And she was like, what? And he was like, I, I only, I can touch the props. And she was like, 
you don't know where they go. They're my, they're my props. They're my sisters. It's my sister. So you don't know where these go. He's like, well, you can't touch them. Only I can. And, but even that being said, like he worked with us. Like, so we were like, this goes here. So then he'd yeah. pick it up and move it, but he was nice. You know, he was nice about it. And Job it wasn't security. Of course. And he wanted and to play by the rules and whatever. And, and we played by the rules and we worked with him. So, you know, if it was a situation like that, he could have just been like, oh, I'm sorry, you guys can't set up yet until I'm finished. But he didn't say that. He picked up all the problems and threw them, chucked them. It's silly because, and I've seen this, I've seen elements of this like happen before, like being on the road with mm-hmm. you, because like the, what your props are, are so, in, are so yeah, insane. insane. That like when there are these union theaters where they have rules about that and they have to like move like an inflatable, you know, inflatable boat or, 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 or a, you know, weird wig or a big, yeah. you know, well, I yeah. don't even know what, I don't even know what I have. I have so many weird props, lots of wigs and weird costumes with butts on them. Like, right. Cause it's not like they have to move Liberace's piano or uh, Hamlet's skull or whatever. It's no, like, it's they're like moving. weird wigs and like duct taped together cardboard yeah, fish. Because all your props are like imagined that Miranda has made toilet them. Paper. So, yeah, it's just a, little, a big roll of toilet paper. Right. So anyway, it, I, to me, it's like, it, okay, did he throw it? Because he, he told us you can't put your props on the stage and then, and then my team did it. No, like no, there's no conversation Nothing about it. Nothing instigated the moment. Huh? He threw it first and then said that it was so banana pants. But anyway, he was also just very grumpy and very rude, but that happens often. Like I find myself when I come across kind crew members at a venue, mm. I go like so hardcore being like, you were so nice. You don't know how rare it is that I find someone so sweet. And I'm not talking smack about crew members. Like I think crew members in theaters, they work so hard and they're like, my show wouldn't happen without them. Like I, I was raised to respect people on crew in theater. I grew up in theater. So it's like, you respect your crew. They make the show happen. Like crew works so freaking hard, but for some reason, touring, I have come across a lot of like kind of grumpy people on cruise. So like whenever I come across a kind person, it like blows my mind. I'm like, Oh my God, you were so sweet. Thank you so much for being so nice and so accommodating. Like I like go, I'm like, I get so excited and so happy whenever we find like a really nice crew person or, or yeah. crew team. Um, because often like it's people are it's a little bit grumpy. They get kind of grumpy. And I don't know if it's cause they're like, Oh, this dumb YouTuber. Like, and they're just don't like me or what it is. I but. think, it, I think, it, yeah, there's, noting in my mind, the demographic of a lot of these people that I've seen is that like they're the night before it was like, you know, someone cool, <laughs> like not someone cool, but yeah. like someone that like, like they're like a Leonard Skinner cover band that they would love. You know what I mean? And then like tonight's like mm, Miranda sings. I'm yeah. Like what is this I'm trash? Gonna, I'm going to throw this trash across. This. Yeah. Right. Cause they seem like uh, a lot of times they, I mean, they typically are like white male ranch kind yeah, of people. Yeah. One time um, I, I don't know if I've told this story on, on here before. I'm not meaning to just talk about tour stories. I think it's just like, where is this conversation going? But one time, I don't know if I've told this story, but a guy um, uh, was like, oh, last time this crew guy was really grumpy. He wouldn't say hi to me when I came in. I said, hi, nice to meet you. I was trying to introduce myself to everybody. Um, he wouldn't really talk to me. He was kind of rude and, but would say hi to everyone else. And I was like, why is he being like this? And I'd been to this venue before. And eventually he goes, Last time you were here, you wouldn't let anyone touch you. No one could come near you. No one could even look at you. No one could breathe in you because you were pregnant. Oh, I was there for this. And he was super rude. And I was like, what? I was like, that's not true. He's like, oh yeah. And he's like telling all the crew, he's like, she wouldn't let anyone go near her. You couldn't even look in her direction without her freaking out because she was pregnant. I was like, that's not true. I was like, I just, at my meet and greet, I said no one could give hugs because I didn't want to get sick and hurt like my unborn child, like with some sickness, but like, yeah, because of a family history, yeah, yeah. because of family history with that. And I was like, but I, I certainly never said no one could talk to me, look at me, come near me. Like I was still getting close to people, hanging out with people. I was, I'm I was sure like, that's that not true. I'm sure that guy who said that looked a lot like the guy who threw your props. I'm just guessing. Well, he, yes. But he was just like, oh no, I know you just wouldn't let anyone near you. You, he was like so angry at me about that. And I was like, oh my God. And he was just so, and I was like, well, I, I definitely would never say that. I would never say no one can look at me. No one can talk to me. No one can be near me. That's never happened. I've never said that before. I don't know who relayed that information to you. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but he was like super grumpy and rude to me about it. And he was talking crap about me to everyone. Like Corey, Sean, like everyone's coming up to me being like, man, that guy will not stop talking crap about you. Like to everybody he can find. Yeah, but then after the show, 
he comes up to me. He's like, that was a really good show. That was like actually great. Like I thought, no, I'm not gonna lie. Like I didn't have high hopes, from, you know, just knowing you, but like, that was great. I was like, thank well, you. you. Comment, I remember you commenting <laughs> during like the sound check or, or maybe even the show, like you kind of referenced, ten, you, you made a comment during about sound check, not during the show. Yeah. During I sound check, you were like, I don't know. You said, no, I you just said responded because I could hear him. Yeah. You kind of put him in his place and then he respected you once you, you kind of called him out. He well, was no, little, I wasn't rude or anything. I no, just, you weren't, no, you weren't rude. You just, you kind of just told, like, he didn't know the whole story there. He didn't know like family yeah, history, I saw, yeah, he, explained he didn't know it. whatever. But like you, what was awful was that he like kind of pushed you to have to like make I know. I was excuse, like, I shouldn't have to explain this. To exp I was like, to explain yourself to him so that he would stop. I know. I was like, like talking trash. Well, Cause it I was could really hear him. Odd. I was trying to do sound check and I could hear him way at the other side of the theater talking loudly to all these people about how I'm this huge diva and no one's like, don't look at her, watch out, you know, don't get near her, watch out. And I was just like, so finally I just, you know, I responded and I was like, no, it's cause I really was trying. I just didn't want to hug people at the meet and greet. That was it. It was, they could come near me. They could talk to me. We just, I wasn't allowed to give like really close intimate hugs because yeah. I was trying not to get sick because my mom got sick when she was pregnant with right. my brother and it caused a lot of problems um, later in life for him. He, he, she was got really sick and it made him sick and it was a danger. It was a very dangerous situation. And I just was trying to avoid that for my own son. And he was like, Oh, this is like, he's, he's just a talk. He just wanted to be, well, I'm, only I'm not telling the story, well. I, you know, it's not, that's not really a funny story, but like, I was just telling it because it just, yeah. it was an example of like, that's a lot of the, like, um, experiences I have in, in theaters is like, there's always a guy who's like this crew member. Who's just like a guy I can tell you just really does not like that. I am there. And then he's doing, working on my show. And, um, so I get really excited when and people are just, they don't have to like me or my show, but no. like, um, just like, you know, professional, just don't and like nice. throw your stuff. Around. Just like, don't throw my props That's across so the stage. It was so happened. crazy. I'm that, so sorry. Isn't that wild? How was the show? The shows were great. They were so fun. Yeah. They were so fun. The audiences were just incredible. That's they what were, it's all about, man. They were so, the audiences were so fun. I, I had an absolute blast. I wish I could have been there. Me too. Yeah. But I think you should just start coming to shows. Why not? So many people who come to meet and greets are like, I love relax. I listen to relax every week. It's my favorite thing you in the world. You said that and I go, literally in my head, I go, what's relax? <laughs> That's what we're doing right now, baby. We're relaxing, baby. Um, I find that surprising, but uh, no, so many I people would like to that. meet them. Mm -hmm. I always say like, oh, I wish Eric was here. You know, and I was thinking about it while I was performing last night on stage, I was singing the song about Flynn's emotions. Mm. I was like, man, I wish we were singing, um, grilled cheese and applesauce together on stage sometimes. Like I wish like we could sing some of our That'd songs from the show from relax in my live show. So if you come to like Denver or something, we should sing something from the podcast. We've been talking about it. Maybe we can make that happen. I know what, song, whole would, Denver what thing. song would we sing? There's so many <sighs> options. They're mostly well, just you know. singing and me sitting there. You know, yeah, Denver, right? I don't know. Yeah, I think you should start coming more. But we gotta figure out how to bring children. You know. Yeah. So we gotta work that out too. That's rough. I mean. But I miss them. Let's let's figure it out. Yeah. Anyway, I would like to go to Denver. I would love for you to come to Denver. Am I invited? You're. What are you talking about? You're invited to every Actually, show. I don't know. Denver, right tonight. You watch the game. Yeah. The Denver. Patriots. Denver Patriots against the LA Chiefs. Yep. Good basketball game. Such good Sad sports. basketball game though. That's series, right? Is basketball on these to days? Lose, to lose 0 and 4 in the in the series. In the series, yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. You know. A lot yeah. of people always have that. Yeah, it's a tough, tough Those way to go. Poor Dodgers. For the for the I was gonna what say are we Lakers. Talking about? Um are we talking about basketball? Mm -hmm. Okay. So a lot of a people game? compare LeBron. James, I know Jim that. Michael Jackson. Yeah, who do you think? <laughs> who do you think is better? Who's what? You know, whose legacy in basketball is better? You think? Who's well, LeBron James? I don't know that Michael Jackson dabbled in basketball. Well, well you said it. I'm I'm assuming you mean Michael Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Jordan. He's but his legacy is better. Everyone knows who Michael Jordan is. Yeah. LeBron James, I only know because like. What? I feel like my dad and my sister and you know about basketball, but like, well, he's is he been, super he's, good? He's super good. Yeah. For a really long time. But the people always talk about rings, you know, rings. Yeah. Rings. Like wedding rings. Yeah. Wedding rings. Do they get like, yeah, that's so weird. Do they get like class rings or something? They get class rings. Yeah. 
No, they get championship rings. Okay. Uh, when they win, so they don't uh, get like a trophy. They get a ring. They the there's a trophy involved. There's like a trophy, sure, yes. But then when the team has won the NBA Finals or the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. they all get matching rings. That's so cute. Yeah. Like friendship bracelets. Right. Exactly. Like big honking things too. Like. Like big gaudy, like says everything on it. It's so big, cute. Yeah, huge. That's really cute. Yeah. Of them. So yeah, no, I don't know what the game is. It's a basketball game. Yeah, I never was, know what sports are. Yeah, Denver. I don't know. Patriots. The, is that what I said? You said Patriots. Chiefs. No. no. Queens. If I were to tell you it's the Nuggets, would you believe me? There's not a chance. <laughs> There's not yeah. a chance. There is an the actual NBA team. basketball team from Denver, Colorado is the Denver Nuggets. There's not a chance. Yes, it is. The Nuggets? I swear. Like Do you chicken believe nuggets? Me? No. Like a gold nugget. Get out of town. Like from prospector days. Wow. Can you believe that? That's wild. Yeah. Hmm. Well, and they lost, I'm assuming. There's no way the they're Nuggets a good team. Won. I'm no offense, but they like they did. The Nuggets the beat the Nuggets. Lakers four games straight to end the wow. series. Yeah, to end the series, they won the whole thing. They won the rings. No, they didn't win. The, now they go to the next round to the finals to see you who didn't gets you just the say rings. It was the you just said they won the finals. It was the Western Conference Finals. This is different. Oh please! Why is there so many finals? Eastern Conference, Western Conference. <gasps> oh my God! Speaking of competitions, I know we're like got to close this out, but I didn't even get to tell you about how there was a venue that I was at, and it was like this crazy big like complex, and there was all these different theaters within the complex, and at the theater next to my theater, there was a musical theater competition, competition? high school competition. I'm shocked you didn't I cancel your show. My, I talked about it. I lost my mind. Musical theater mind. high school competition? What do you mean? I lost my mind. And the winners of that got to go to the Jimmy's, the Jimmy Awards, which I don't know what that is, but I guess it's like the Tonys for high schoolers because I said it to oh. a couple of other people and they're like, oh my God, the Jimmy's. Did you have this in college? No. Because we had the, the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival to where it's like every one of our shows, they would send Didn't what, you what they called adjudicators. Didn't you win? Sometimes for some things. Yeah. I got to like go to like regional and some, yeah, the conferences see, and stuff. See how exciting that is? But they would have like judges come from the, from the theater, American College Theater Festival to be like, not good. Or they, and they, it was really terrible because they would pick the two best Mm-hmm. And their opinion, performers from the show, or sometimes just one who got to go compete essentially in a monologue or a scene competition, mm-hmm. like in wherever they were holding it, like Rhode Island or something, mm-hmm. um, or DC. And it was extremely rare if a whole production got taken mm-hmm. to be showcased at the sink, but that happened to me. Yeah. Two Look times. You famous. So well, did I was- do that for you. No, I never, you never went to the Jimmy's. <laughs> no, I never No, I don't know anything about it, but I was losing my mind. And so I was like, screw soundcheck. I'm going to this tech rehearsal. Did they're you? having, of course I did. And I stood in the back of the theater and I watched these high schoolers perform and I cried. Yeah. I, my eyes were full of tears. I was like, there's nothing more exciting than watching a passionate theater high schooler kid perform on a stage. What were they and doing? Just, Oh, everything. It was like, they all got to sing like 30 seconds of a song. And like, they're all just like, and they had this very musical theater competition. Oh yeah. Because for me, it was like, we're, we're being judged and we're doing our town. It's like, how do you do our town for a competition? You know what I mean? Like Uh how do you, it's monologues and whatnot. But yeah, it was, uh, I'm so tired. Sorry. I did not mean to just yawn in your face. I thought you were going to eat your microphone. I'm really hungry too. (laughs) But um, I lost my mind. It was the best thing. And I just, I I was like, oh my God, Eric and I have to open up a theater school. Because all I want to do is teach musical theater to high schoolers. Come on. Let's do it. I'm so ready. We got to. How do we do it? Okay. I don't know. We got to do it. But um, right now we got to go. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We love y'all. And uh, we'll see you next week. Right, lovey? Sorry. I didn't know if you wanted me to like sing songy with you. You sing. I'll, I'll come in. I'll harmonize. <clears throat> we'll see, see you next, next week. week. No, I, I can do better than that. Let's cut we'll, that. Okay, what? Yeah, you didn't even try. No, seriously, cut that. Okay. okay so do you sing, we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. We'll see. That's the same. That's unison? Yeah. Hmm. How about you sing and I'll harmonize to you? Okay, ready? Okay. We'll, we'll see you next week. week. Oh my God, we're Did so I do cute. Vibrato? I hope. <laughs> You can relax, Colleen and Eric have a podcast.
past, the world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax, that's the name of our podcast.